Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna start working on harvesting our pumpkins and squash. Starting out here in the greenhouse, because why wouldn't you plant a massive squash plant right in the middle of your greenhouse? I don't even know where this plant came from. It just popped up. I noticed it had squash looking leaves and we thought, well, let's just see what it does. Well, now it's getting to a point where, uh, you know, it's starting to get cooler at night. We're going to quickly move into the season where we need to start rolling the sides down and it's like growing out of the greenhouse and in the way of the, the walls going up and down. It's also been tremendously in our way. <laughs> We've been working around it for a long time now. So I wanna get this whole vine harvested like ready or not so we can get it out of here. And then we're gonna head out to the new property. I think I've got the 30 or so hills out there and I'm not even sure what we're going to find out there uh, because it's so hard with the leaf canopy. Like looking from right here, you wouldn't think that there was anything underneath those leaves, but then you start looking around and you think, oh, look at all of these. So what is this? What kind of squash? Let me cut this off. They are cute some type of a winter squash and it's dark green with like chartreuse flecks. I went through all my seed packets to see if I possibly had seeds that match what this looks like and I can't see that I do. That doesn't mean that I didn't in the past because I know I've grown some sort of similar but there's a ton of them on this vine. Real quick before we start getting into the harvest I wanted to mention the few ways you can know that you're pumpkins and squash are ready to be harvested. I mean, you can wait until the very end, like until frost has taken the leaves and then it makes them very easy to see and you can go out and harvest. A stem is a very good indicator, stem color. Oftentimes they'll change from a light green to a brown color, like a tan color. Uh, this one is hard to tell because this one's dark green, but they get really hard and kind of like woody. And the other way that you can tell is the thumbnail test. You take your thumbnail, push it into the skin or like, a skin, right? Just get rind, whatever. Push it into the side of your squash or your pumpkin. And I mean, put some decent pressure on it. If it makes a big indent, your fingernail makes a big indent, it's probably not cured enough to come off. Um, I've harvested them like that before. It's just that it takes them a little bit longer to ripen off the vine and then the storage life might not be quite as good on them. But if it doesn't make much of an indent at all, then it's cured and ready to come off the vine. So like, rah, putting my thumbnail into this thing, I was making like a tiny little mark, but not much. So, I mean, technically we could wait on this. We could wait till the leaves just wither away, but I need to get this out of the way. We've got things to water over here. And right now we're taking the hose all the way around just to water those few things. So anyway, I'm, I'm ready. When we're right around October 1st, I'm ready anyway, because I wanna use these. We grow them to decorate with them. Some of them will go into the root cellar uh, so that we can store them to eat. But anyway, let's just see how many come off this vine. Let's get after it. Okay, well that's not bad, 51 squash. Isn't that awesome? From a plant that I didn't even put in the ground myself. Now I did find one that was immature. So this is a really good example of one that we could have left on the vine longer. See how the stem is much lighter green? When you put them next to each other, it's pretty drastic. And this one, like you can see the skin and the whole thing is pretty squishy and I can make a nice indent and this one, do the same thing and it makes a tiny little indent but not much and the stem is nice and stiff so anyway something to look for yeah so if you guys have any idea as to what variety this might be i would love to know i also saved out this the uh, roots here because i found this kind of interesting this whole greenhouse has landscape fabric and gravel on top of it. Uh, that's the way we prepped the area when we put the greenhouse in and I'm so thankful we did that because it's taken the weed pressure down incredibly 
huge. I don't even know what kind of an issue we would have in here. With the, all the water and fertilizer and stuff that goes on in the greenhouse, we would just have a carpet of weeds all the time. So, you know, we removed the sod that was here, put the DeWitt Pro landscape fabric down, and then the gravel. So this was rooted in on top of the landscape fabric. So it goes to show the landscape fabric is not a, an end all for weeds. It just, it's not. It's a help in certain situations. Um, like we used it here in the high tunnel and then in two spots in our garden where we had bindweed issues. Um, where we didn't want to spray or didn't have the ability to spray it out. So anyway, yeah. What do you think, Russell? I just found that kind of interesting. That root just kind of like stopped. And then this one is cruising out. I'm not sure how far it goes underneath the gravel, but I just thought it was kind of cool looking. And all of that is going to Bethany's pigs today. I love that Bethany keeps pigs. It's so perfect um, because all of our tomatoes, like we just do, we remove just a few at a time, whatever we can fill Paul's truck up with, and then they go feed the pigs with those things. So that's what happens with all of our um, vine crops. Anything that the pigs can eat goes out there. And this is a great start to our harvest. Pigs can have this one too. Okay, so here are the rest of the vine crops out on the new property. You can see what's left of the tomatoes there and the corn. We've been cutting off that for container arrangements. And all the vine crops are right in here. Now, I don't intend on cleaning out the vines like I did in the greenhouse because there's still a lot of squash in here. Oh, look at this one. Oh, so pretty. There's still a lot of squash in here, I think, that needs some time to ripen and they may have enough time. But oh my, okay. Look in here, look at this. Oh my goodness. But see, like I might pick that one or we could leave this one a little longer. And my word, look at that. What a beaut. Picking pumpkins and digging potatoes kind of hold the same allure for me. I'm excited for this, let's just get into it. Uh, and like I said, this project will probably take me into tomorrow, but when I'm all done, we're gonna have them all lined up and I will give you a tour of them all. Here we go. I'm gonna call it, it's starting to get a little bit breezy out here. It's kicking that powder dirt up everywhere and it's supposed to get windier as the day progresses. Plus, I'm really excited with our harvest so far and this is maybe less than half of what we have out here still yet to harvest. Look at this, you guys, isn't this fun? This is at least a good representation of what we still have yet to harvest. I bet you we have maybe not double this amount still out there, but at least one and a half times this amount, especially if you were to count these, I don't, not even really kind of considering how many of these are out here. These are the Tennessee spinning gourds um, and they're not quite ready. And there's hundreds of these out here, just hundreds. 
they're so cute. So today I just went through and picked the things that were the most ripe. Some of them weren't quite there, but I picked them anyway because I wanted to use them to decorate with. And then we'll just leave the rest of these out here until, I don't know, a few weeks, maybe from now, maybe two, three weeks from now, and then we'll come back out and do another harvest. But let's run through some of these varieties because there really are some neat ones. Now this one's called Autumn Crown. I put papers down on the ground so I could remember all of the varieties here, but I just love the shape of this one. I've never cooked with this. This is a type of pumpkin. So I can't, from experience, tell you what like the flavor is like with these. I just like to decorate with these. I like how flat they are and the size. They're a really manageable size and they're just such a beautiful creamy tan. Oh, they're so pretty. And then we have the speckled hound just beyond those, which come out in all kinds of different colors. Look at that one, like much more deep orange. This one's got more of a pink. This one has that light sagey green with the pink. They're just so soft and beautiful. They actually look really pretty with these. And then only a handful of butternuts were ready. In fact, I picked this one only because I accidentally stepped on the vine that was feeding it. See how this one still has some lines of green in it? Not quite ready to pick, but it's fine. It will cure um, off the vine too. I think it's far enough along, but you kind of want to wait until they're like uniformly tan, nice and firm. The stem's nice and brown. We kind of went through all those indicators, but there's a ton of these. We have two hills. These are the butterscotch butternuts. And then we also have honey nuts. The honey nuts have been my favorite butternut squash I have ever grown. And they are the last things to ripen out here. None of those were ready today. So those, the ones I have here are the butterscotch and they really range in size. There's some whoppers out there <laughs> that are not ripe yet. I mean like double the size, like double the size of this one. They're just massive. Uh, these are really <laughs> nice because honestly, when I'm cooking with one, I normally don't need something super huge. So I really like kind of the standard size of these. And then we've got the Midnight Pumpkins. Aren't these cool? Oh, I, I can't even remember where I ordered these from. I want to say it was off of Etsy. I just came across that variety and thought it would be so cool. And they kind of look like an acorn squash uh, in color, like a green one. But they've got that small pumpkin shape and I thought they would be fun to try to decorate with. Anyway, that was a successful experiment. I don't think there's that many more of these out there. Maybe a couple that weren't ripe yet. Uh, so th that vine overall wasn't like amazingly productive, but pretty good. And then there's Autumn Frost. There's a whole bunch of these left out there. These are beautiful. They have that frosty kind of patina over their tan skin. Aren't they gorgeous? So just a few of those were ready, accidentally cut the vine that these were on. So you can see what they look like prior to ripening. Um, so they will develop more of that tan color instead of this green. So we'll see what happens with these. This one was trying to get tan right there. Bummer. Only a couple of flat stackers. I never get very many off my vines. I think there's two left out there that weren't quite ready. Um, but you know, as long as I get enough to stack, do a couple of stacks of pumpkins. I'm usually happy with that. So I grow them every year, but definitely for me, haven't been a, an overly productive one number wise. Then we've got a few Cinderella's. There's more on the vine out there. In fact, this one I picked um, because it was kind of sitting in water and while the top doesn't look super ripe, the bottom did and that was what was showing. Uh, but these are always really cool. Some years they don't ripen up orange for me. They stay in a dark green. So I'm thrilled. I just love this shape. You can kind of tell. I always pick kind of the flat squat ones. These are ugly. These are Big Macs right here. I'm not going to grow this one again. Look at that. Like, what do you do with that? I don't want to decorate with that. I'm going to have to just, I might have to carve it or something. I don't know. And they're coming out sort of odd, all of them. This one has more yellow. This one was sitting in water. That's why I picked it. Um, and then this one's kind of warty. That one's kind of cool. I like that add some texture. There are a few more left out there of the Big Macs. There's a whole bunch of sugar pie pumpkins left on the vine. In fact, you can see a green one right there. There's a whole bunch left in there. These are the ones that were ripe today. This one was stealing all the energy. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And usually they come out like this size, pretty standard, but I've got like varying sizes going on this year. These are always really nice. And then we have a mix of Connecticut Fields and Howden. I, I just couldn't distinguish. I planted them right next to each other. There's a whole bunch of green ones out there. I'm guessing that that one right there is a Howden. 
they usually have a little bit more of this shape and that one might be a Connecticut field. See how that one's taller, but I'm not, I can't be positive. I'm not sure. So anyway, hopefully we have a few more of those turn orange. My goodness. Whew. See the wind's starting to pick up. One of my signs is on the, on the run. Huh. Which one is this? Oh, porcelain doll. Oh yeah. It did rain a little bit there for a little while too. This is a variety, write it down, called Snowball. 93 pumpkins from one hill, which means like five seeds were planted in that hill. I just, I can't even believe it. They're awesome. I love the stems. Look how long those stems are. And some of them come out kind of curled. We got a few little baby ones. I just kept picking and picking and picking this variety. And I thought, my goodness, when is it gonna end? They're amazing and bright white too, especially once we get them cleaned up. Next, we have a few sweet meats, which are really good for pies actually, and they store forever. So I'm thrilled to have a few of those. There's still a few more left out there. Then we've got porcelain doll. Aren't these so pretty? These kind of got a weird shape. Like usually, I'm used to them looking like this. This is like standard porcelain doll. These got kind of like a point going on, but I love it. I love the deep ribs. I just think they're the prettiest color. And I'm not sure that we got any more than that. There might be one out there. Um, so it's kind of like the flat stackers. I usually just get a handful and that's it. And then we've got some Igor pumpkins right here. Aren't these cool? I'm so excited. These are so great for carving. And we really just, we needed two, you know, Benjamin and Samantha. I uh, got those two, which aren't quite orange yet, but we've got a few more left out there. I uh, just love it. I think they have a nice strong stem, just classic looking. And last but not least, the pumpkins in the back of the gator. A whole bunch of Jack B. Little and Dill's Atlantic Giant pumpkins, which aren't super giant, but I honestly thought that we lost the vine there for a little while. It turned super yellow and wilted down and I thought it was just gonna dry up and go away. And you guys, I apologize if my audio is horrible. I'm trying to protect my microphone from the wind, but huh, it's kind of a hard deal. Anyway, the vine kind of bounced back a little bit and I didn't take any of the pumpkins off. I didn't uh, do any of the little extra things you can do to try to make your pumpkins bigger. I just let it grow. I was just happy that the vine survived. I probably won't grow this again because again, I don't think these are pretty pumpkins at all. Um, this one looks pretty good. I mean, the fact that it didn't get so big and so like mushed down means that we will probably carve that one. That'll be kind of fun. And then our Jack B. Littles here, which are just the classic. I just love these. These are so awesome. There's probably, I don't know, 150 left out there, I'm guessing. They just, I don't know, they're so prolific. I had two hills of these. So I planted these pumpkins from seed out here right around May 24th. So they've been in the ground for just over four months, which a lot of the varieties, especially ones that get big, take quite a long time, about that long, uh, to start to ripen, except for butternuts, which usually take longer than <laughs> everything else. I don't know what your experience has been there, uh, but that's been my experience throughout the years. So that will be one of the last things uh, that we do harvest. But when I planted them out here, it was just tilled up soil. I'm not even positive I added any fertilizer. I think I was just so concerned about getting the water system set up and getting them in the ground and getting it done that that's all that happened and they didn't get anything throughout the seed. Oh, nope, they did get one application of fertilizer. I did do, I did come out here and I did garden tone. So I know that they got some at one point of the season and you know, they probably would be even more productive if I was a little bit more diligent about fertilizing through the season and I'm just, you know, we're lucky to get one or two applications down. And I couldn't be happier with that. I mean, that's an amazing harvest. I mean, given the fact that we still have so many more out there. Now I did tromp around quite a lot. I was as careful as I could be to not step on vines. Um, so it's possible some of those vines might start to wither up, in which case we'll take the plants off. And oftentimes, especially if they're kind of close to ripe, you can set them somewhere um, out of the, I usually set them in the barn on the floor and they usually do a pretty good job at curing and ripening up the rest of the way. Now, some of these I grow just for decorating and some I do uh, just for eating. Like butternuts, I don't normally decorate with butternuts. We usually put those in the root cellar right away. I do like to go through them though. If any of them have any nicks or any bruising or any, you know, any damage to them, I like to try to get through those first before we get into the good ones because the storage life of those just kind of goes down a little bit. They usually like a temperature for storage right around 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit with really good air ventilation. Um, right now, I think 
think our root cellar is at 40, so I might kick that up to about 45, but we are also storing potatoes and onions. I have to try to kind of find a happy medium, and then we are gonna be moving dahlias in, and we're gonna dig some of those. So anyway, I think that's gonna be it for today's video. I did forget to mention, and maybe I should have mentioned this first, that you probably noticed the kids out there helping me pick and haul some of the pumpkins after I mentioned that I wasn't gonna let them do that because I thought there might be black widows out there. I did not run across a single spider. I started in harvesting and I was very careful. I was going fairly slow looking through the vines. I didn't even run across, like not a spider, not even a benign spider out there. I ran across some ladybugs and lots of squash bugs and that is it. So I let them come in kind of in the areas where I'd already tromped down the vines a little bit and they had such a big time, you guys. So fun when kids are involved with the picking of the pumpkins because it is like a treasure hunt and it's like this special thing that they have been watching grow through the season so I was super thankful that it turned out to be the way it was because it was fun for everyone so anyway that is it for today thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one bye